The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett Illustrated by Helena Perez Garcia Ten-year-old orphan Mary Lennox has recently moved from India to her uncle's mansion in England. Mary has made a few friends at the mansion, including the gardener, Ben Weatherstaff, and a friendly robin who often keeps Ben company. She's also discovered a mysterious walled-off garden that's been abandoned for ten years. Mary would love to get inside this secret garden, but hasn't been able to find an entrance. The day before, however, she found an old key, half buried in the dirt. The skipping rope was a wonderful thing. She counted and skipped, and skipped and counted, until her cheeks were quite red, and she was more interested than she had ever been since she was born. The sun was shining, and a little wind was blowing. Not a rough wind, but one which came in delightful little gusts, and brought a fresh scent of newly turned earth with it. She skipped round the fountain garden, and up one walk and down another. She skipped at last into the kitchen garden, and saw Ben Weatherstaff digging and talking to his robin, which was hopping about him. She skipped down the walk toward him. He lifted his head and looked at her with a curious expression. She had wondered if he would notice her. She really wanted him to see her skip. Mary skipped round all the gardens and round the orchard, resting every few minutes. At length, she went to her own special walk. She made up her mind to try to skip the whole length of it. It was a good long skip, and she began slowly. But before she had gone halfway down the path, she was so hot and breathless that she was obliged to stop. She did not mind much, because she had already counted up to thirty. She stopped with a little laugh of pleasure. There, lo and behold, was the robin swaying on a long branch of ivy. He had followed her, and he greeted her with a chirp. As Mary had skipped toward him, she felt something heavy in her pocket strike against her at each jump. When she saw the robin, she laughed again. You showed me where the key was yesterday, she said. You ought to show me the door today, but I don't believe you know. The robin flew from his swinging spray of ivy onto the top of the wall, and he opened his beak and sang a loud, lovely trill, merely to show off. Nothing in the world is quite as adorably lovely as a robin when he shows off, and they are nearly always doing it. Make sure to look at the pictures um, as you go along because you can see the characters and you see how they il illustrate them. This will help you visualize uh, what is going on in the story. Mary Lennox had heard a great deal about magic in stories. And she always said that what happened almost at that moment was magic. One of the nice little gusts of wind rushed down the walk, and it was a stronger one than the rest. It was strong enough to wave the branches of the trees. It was more than strong enough to sway the trailing sprays of untrimmed ivy hanging from the wall. Mary had stepped close to the robin and suddenly the gust of wind swung aside some loose ivy trails. More suddenly still, she jumped toward it and caught it in her hand. This she did because she had seen something under it, a round knob which had been covered by the leaves hanging over it. It was the knob of a door. She put her hands under the leaves and began to pull and push them aside, Thick as the ivy hung, it nearly all was a loose and swinging curtain, though some had crept over wood and iron. Mary's heart began to thump, 
and her hands to shake a little in her delight and excitement. The robin kept singing and twittering away, and tilting his head on one side, as if he were as excited as she was. What was this under her hands, which was square and made of iron, and which her fingers found a hole in? It was the lock of the door, which had been closed ten years. She put her hand in her pocket, drew out the key, and found it fitted the keyhole. She put the key in and turned it. It took two hands to do it, but it did turn. And then she took a long breath and looked behind her up the long walk to see if anyone was coming. No one was coming. No one ever did come, it seemed. She took another long breath because she could not help it. She held back the swinging curtain of ivy and pushed back the door, which opened slowly, slowly. So we can see here、um, our illustrator also gave us details on the door. Then she slipped through it and shut it behind her. And stood with her back against it, looking about her and breathing quite fast with excitement and wonder and delight. She was standing inside the secret garden. It was the sweetest, most mysterious looking place anyone could imagine. The high walls which shut it in were covered with leafless stems of climbing roses, which were so thick that they were matted together. Mary Lennox knew they were roses because she had seen a great many roses in India. All the ground was covered with grass of a wintry brown. Out of it grew clumps of bushes which were surely rose bushes if they were alive. There were numbers of standard roses which had so spread their branches that they were like little trees. There were other trees in the garden. And one of the things which made the place look strangest and loveliest was that climbing roses had run all over them and swung down long tendrils, which made light swaying curtains. Here and there they had caught at each other, or at a far reaching branch, and had crept from one tree to another, and made lovely bridges of themselves. There were neither leaves nor roses on them now. And Mary did not know whether they were dead or alive. But their thin gray or brown branches and sprays looked like a sort of hazy mantle spreading over everything walls and trees, and even brown grass, where they had fallen from their fastenings and run along the ground. It was this hazy tangle from tree to tree which made it all look so mysterious. Mary had thought it must be different from other gardens, which had not been left all by themselves so long. Indeed, it was different from any other place she had ever seen in her life. How still it is! she whispered. How still! Then she waited a moment and listened at the stillness. The robin, who had flown to his tree top, was still as all the rest. He did not even flutter his wings. He sat without stirring and looked at Mary. Mysterious. Something that is mysterious is not fully understood or explainable. Matted. Something that is matted is a tangled mess. Tendrils. Tendrils of plants are long, thin sections that often twist around an object or another plant. Fastenings. Fastenings attach objects to other things. No wonder it is still, she whispered again. I am the first person who has spoken in here for ten years. She moved away from the door, stepping as softly as if she were afraid of awakening someone. She was glad that there was grass under her feet and that her steps made no sounds. She walked under one of the fairy like gray arches between the trees, 
and looked up at the sprays and tendrils which formed them. I wonder if they are all quite dead, she said. Is it all a quite dead garden? I wish it wasn't. If she had been Ben Weatherstaff, she could have told whether the wood was alive by looking at it. But she could only see that there were only gray or brown sprays and branches, and none showed any signs of even a tiny leaf bud anywhere. But she was inside the wonderful garden, and she could come through the door under the ivy any time, and she felt as if she had found a world all her own. Awakening. If you are awakening someone, you are waking them from sleep. So I hope you enjoyed that short story. Um, you can always go back through and reread it or re-listen to it. Uh, but make sure that you are ready for our 